sure. I'm gonna have a look at my own stream. It looks to be at acceptable levels. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome, everyone. This is the final episode, most likely. Which means, no matter how much of the game there is, we're just gonna go to the end and... And that'll be it. Now, I have some candy. Swedish candy, specifically. These are Bilar. They are small. Sort of foam gummy candy, I don't know. Foam is... I don't know. They're just, you know, little cars. And they have a pretty funky, sugary flavor. On top of that, I have... Swedish fish. light plays a trick on the cracks and with the cracks shadows dance across sharp edges and distended cavities oh hey someone sighs almost apologetically i may have a problem we've already gone through this actually last time i guess the save point was earlier Ditch is sitting uh, sitting on the ground. He appears to be missing a leg, but at second glance, it's been swallowed up, uh, swallowed up, uh, swallowed up by a narrow hole. The floor is riddled with them, like a coral reef. Ow! He mentioned. Ow! Ow! But Ollie claps a hand over his mouth. You all hear it nearby, scraping on stone through stone. So we have a few options here. I think this is the one we did last time. I think that's the one we should do this time too. Ditch screams and blood flushes through the hole like a drain. You see, uh, no, you expect to see a stump, but instead, there's a trow carved into his leg. Or trough carved into his leg. Ouch. Um, but the rock floor's razor edges. He'll live, probably. Shields. You shout as creatures rumble out of the darkness. Okay. So, he's now injured. I feel like people are just saying good voice and nice voice to be, like, ironic or sarcastic or how the fucking is it a nice voice or is there something wrong? I've never... Sorry, I haven't asked the uh, if the audio is okay this time around. So, let me know. Um, let us see here. Does everyone have an item? I think pretty much everyone does, except for Juno and Spar. And Afrin. This is pretty much our A-team, except we're gonna grab Ollie. 
and we're gonna replace we're gonna replace Percy Creatures are kind of gross. Uh, this person is gonna immediately throw out some barbed stones to spawn some whatever they're called scarabs, I think. from that sounds that ain't gonna happen but what do you have can do
this.
approaches in the distance. Small against the vastness of the inner earth, you feel tired just thinking about the march to come. That tower is our only goal now. That thing stands out like a like blood on snow. It doesn't belong here, does it? No, it was built by the Velka. It's where Ivan and I will undo this. What is that enormous dome laying behind it? A fallen sun. And when do you plan to explain any of this? There may come a point where I have little choice. That point is not now. It will not be a short conversation, or a happy one. Speaking of unhappy things, I can sense the loss of Falka is a dire blow to the ravens. It may be wise to try and keep their spirits up, and I'm afraid there is something else you should know. As we fell, I could feel a change in Arbara. Is Rook all right? Can you tell? Their days are numbered. We no longer have the luxury of knowing, uh, of not knowing. Every single day we lose is another day our barang may fall. Enough talk then. Alright, sweet. Gods, I can't see the ceiling. There's no ceiling. We're inside the world. Did it always look this dead? No. This place used to be full of life. The caravan moves slowly, taking in strangers. The strangers of the place. Sorry about the sounds upstairs. What did it look like before the darkness, you wonder? Ditch trips over his own feet again. I thought you were supposed to be the sneaky one, Spar mumbles, but he's not doing much better. Ivan shakes his head. You aren't used to being here. It will pass. You ignore the bickering that follows. Everyone seems a bit testy. Others complain of dizziness and nausea. And swear that on the uh, and swear the ground is rotating until you are forced to stop. Spar solicits for a new hat. soon, Ollie says, pointing. It doesn't seem any closer than when you first saw it. The others ignore your demands, and you're not feeling too well yourself. It seems like a long while before you head out again. She's in panic to get all the goats. 
notes back in her pen. Everybody's looking. Then her husband starts screaming at me. Freak. Big nosed freak. Maybe we should keep it down. That's rough, you know? You ever had someone screaming freak at you? Freak. The last shout echoes noticeably shortly after you spot movement. The ravens curse ditch as they draw their weapons. How's this my fault? We're glowing like the freaking sun. Festival down here. Stop shouting, ditch. Man. This guy needs to calm down. Oh. So ditch needs to be in. Ugh. So he's just dead. So is Ditch. I think it's on purpose.
Okay, so we're basically... Holy <laughs> fuck. We're basically relying on... Ollie to do all the hard work. fight a little bit more. in a row. If we lose, that's why. And that's super... 
Surprise attacks are so difficult to kill.
that this guy is going to destroy us, but...
that seems to make everyone a little happier. Alucard dares 
missed a short slide onto it, saying, seems solid enough, man, Valkyrie is careless. Spread out in single file and push onto the ice. One good mistake deserves another, mutters Ollie. One replies bar sliding onto the ice. It withstands their weight well, as well as their skepticism. Okay, cool. Step lightly. The ice may hold, but let's not test it. I swear something beneath us is moving. It wasn't an ocean. <coughs> Sorry about that. My fucking whispering voice is just dying. <laughs> it was an ocean. Blah, blah, blah. Bigger than others. Then maybe we should keep quiet. Is everyone here? You shout. Ravens rub soot from their faces and cough into their hands. Thick black dust, dust, dust haunts the air, kicked up by the leviathans thrashing. I can see her. Ivan shouts. A globe of light detaches from the convulsing silhouette of the serpent, blazing through the air and crashing like a meteor, far in the light, uh, far in the distance. Ivan darts ahead. With his own light. The rest follow. Hello there. You crawl through curtains of dust. It's suddenly dark as a moonless night. Juno's light dims and winks out. Hurry, shouts Ivan.
direction you're heading in anymore. You dread of the identical flat earth. We're not going to find her just randomly wandering around. You concede to an exhausted crew. As soon as you admit it's impossible to know where you're going, blah blah blah. Separate into two groups and search a larger area. Alfred protests, but has no better ideas. She takes half the ravens, while you go with Ivan and the others, careful to keep each other in sight. A trill and shout in the distance is followed by ringing weapons. You race towards the light to, to discover a horde of warped dredge. They jumped us in the dark, shouts Valgard, blood streaming down his arm. I do not have any pets now. Man, our team is just dead. Two plus strength and forty dot strength. Okay, who needs dodge?
often launches herself forward with the spear set. One strength damage plus one per two times jump. so much damage. So, X robes, and yeah, X robes X. Ouch. No, 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 no. This fight is kind of difficult. <laughs> We've only got these four guys left. Oh, fuck me. It deflected. That is so not fucking fair. I hate when that happens.
place, I gotta say. Like, that was... I'm actually really proud of myself. We might not win still, but like, that was really, really, really well played. <sighs> Thinking on my feet here. I'm pretty proud of that. We should not have been able to do that. This is over. That's kind of pointless to keep going, but I guess I'll just wait it out. That's really annoying.
other camera. How's it going today? Pretty good. I looked after my nieces and nephews. So it's been a long day, but... You gasp in the suffocating darkness. The golden glow from your allies wings out. Like drowning in a dark black abyss. Visions pass behind your eyes, thoughts of Juno and strange shapes and ideas, as if dreaming. How long have you been here? And then you gasp, and pain returns to your limbs. You briefly wonder if this is the afterlife you heard uh, hear Spar mumble. How am I still not dead? Ash hangs heavily in the air as Ivan cradles the body of a Juno, a soft glow surrounding her. The warped are nowhere to be seen. The survivors glance among each other. I saw, I guess they like your cooking. Hell yeah. You find Juno's body laying out on the ice. She is mangled, barely recognizable, grotesque. No coming back from that. If the serpent and the foal didn't get her, the stag did. Not to mention, she's just been laying there out in the darkness. Who knows how long. This is the end, isn't it? We failed. What do we do? We finish what we came to do. This is not the end. Ivan's face and voice are expressionless, but tears streak. His cheeks. We take her to the White Tower. Ivor, pick her up. It doesn't sound like a request. missing an item. We'll give this to Skadatch. Rowek, 20 percent crit chance. Zephyr. Um, now, 
Is there a reason they started so far back? Maybe. I don't know. What I'll do... No, I don't know. I was gonna spawn a bear behind us, but I guess we need the bear. So we got reinforcements from a bear and a dude. Okay, cool. use this guy. Whose turn is it? I, okay. This guy's got a lot of break. Let's get this. There goes our bear.
Buradan işte yarım kalın. It's not really worth using. No, there is no
sometimes I have to wonder about humanity or barely holding the walls and all the clans I can manage and all the clans can manage is to rob and kill each other Captain, my menders need more protection on the walls You have as many as we can spare, Valka The rest are in the streets Our barang isn't worth saving if only killers and thievers remain Even if my father were here, he'd have little control over the city now. I have even less, but I am certain I can find men loyal to my father's banner. Put me in command of the walls. Are you certain? I can guarantee you no safety here. If there is a time for me to lead, it is now. They look to you. You realize that whoever is put in charge of the walls may be in serious danger. the horse part more, but um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not gonna, this is not about honor or tradition or, or whatever, family lines, this is about survival, so we're sending the horse part.
lifted the dredge spilled godstones of their own they did and hope is not lost yet either buzz Psst. you jerk in terror and juno's voice in your head and her hand lightly squeezing your shoulder she breathes softly well done you can put me down nerves get the best of even the bravest not another step shouts ollie he pushes his way to juno you died not another step till i spill till you spill it all of it a chorus of voices concur echoing off the pillars themselves juno sags upon her staff she looks at ivan but this stare of leagues from here but his stare is leagues from here all will be well she starts but jerks back from ollie's axe blade her uh, axe blade at her neck no more magic trick ollie hisses encourage juno to answer the question you're right says juno it's time you all knew this will be more easily shown than told Valka were the first to discover a world within our world. The inner earth, with its own lands, people, and sun. A source of power far greater than our own. Ivan is the boss, the leader of the Valka, brilliant, born with a mind devouring itself. I studied in secret to heal those wounds, and in time, we grew to love each other. But meddling with minds is forbidden, for reasons already clear to you. The council sentenced me to death. They agreed to spare Ivan the same fate I went failing. So I did. When Ivan discovered what had happened, he carried my body to the White Tower. In his grief, he drained the black sun of its energy, hoping to restore my life. The sun fell from the sky, ripping chasms through both worlds. The serpent slithered out from its shattered egg, half-born, and the darkness within spread. I had become the new vessel for its power. When we reach the White Tower, and Ivan releases my energy, the sun will move again, and the darkness will return to where it belongs. Oh, now she looks all old. As Gina releases her grip of the caravan, the images fade. Ivan carried me all the way. Back to Ridgehorn before he could go no further. That's where Hawken warrior, Hawken's warriors found us. They understandably believed I was dead and left me there. Ivan lived still, if only barely. By the time he awoke, the Varl had taken him most of the way to Einartoft. When I realized what had happened, I traveled by ship down the river to meet Ivan at Sigarholm, but the serpent's chasms prevented this. I believe you know the rest. I'm certain you have many questions, and I will answer them clearly. This goes all the way back to the time of the gods. This can become a long and com this can become long and complicated. I'll keep it simple. The loom mother first discovered it weaving, and with it created this world and those living in it. The other beings in the tapestry, other gods, reacted in many different ways. Some wanted to learn weaving, and they took creations she made and changed them, forming Barl and Horseborn. One god became jealous. He took mankind, reshaped them into dredge, and hid them within the world to grow and torment other creations. When the Lou Mother, uh, Lou Mother learned of this, she became furious. As she had discovered her creation, she had also unwittingly created and accidentally killed the jealous god in anger. The other gods were terrified. They had never imagined 
not existing. They turned on each other out of fear. The gods died, but their creations continued on. The Vaka were the Loom Mother's favorite few. She taught them weaving. Ivan and I are descendants of those first people. What does the serpent have to do with any of this? I'll admit, even I was uncertain. But the easiest way to understand it is to imagine an egg. The serpent's egg was made inside the inner earth, a black sun mirroring our own. Within, a serpent would grow slowly over the ages. It was put here to eventually swallow the loom mother's creations, a cruel trick to destroy them in secret. When the black sun fell to the earth and cracked, the serpent and its power spilled out well before its time. Everything happening now is because of petty grudges between the gods. In a way, Ivan unwittingly did us all a favor. If the serpent has, uh, had grown to its full size, well, at least as things are now, there may be a chance to reverse it. I'm not exactly bursting with gratitude at the moment. Understandable. If the dredge were taught by the Valka, why are they attacking us? The stone singers believe we have betrayed them. Early on, we discovered the Black Sun was far greater surface of power than our own. After the worst of the great wars, everyone believed the Valka utterly defeated the dredge. In exchange for use of the sun's power, we showed them how to flourish within their own lands and create more of their own kind. So you created the stone singers. In a way, we only shared knowledge. It has always been difficult to question how much control to exert. But now they believe we caused this destruction on purpose. They think that we wish to wipe them out. And like anyone would, they fight back. They're scared and frenzied and will not listen. We have failed them as much as we have failed everyone else. I've heard enough. What now? Now we return to the source of the power. I'm not dead, but neither am I alive. This energy within me is stolen. Ivan will place me within the black sun at the celestial spheres. The, celestial, the celestial spheres will circle again. The darkness will be absorbed, and without that, the serpent will wither. She suddenly looks very tired, but tries to smile. You'll be trapped in the sun. I have come to terms with it, and now you know everything. Make sure Ivan does what is right.
edge of the light, staring at the godstone. Mind if I join you? Hard to find space around here. Just keep your voice down. That vicious, wrinkled fiffle won't share any of his drink, and my head hurts. In the distance, Spar takes a moment from lazily tuning his lang spell to throw Ollie a wildly inappropriate gesture. Ran out of your own brew. Lost my flask when that well thing shattered the frozen ocean. You hear the things coming out of my mouth. Sober is no way to live, however. Ollie stares blankly into the distance. What's your drink of choice? What's yours? Jock's milk? Who cares? Ah, never mind me. You know how some men can't handle their drink. I can't handle being dry. My head hurts. That seems like a problem. Never has been before. Who would want to take in all this majesty? <laughs> Clearly. I haven't been this sober since I was thirteen, locked up in Boar's guarded cell. Ollie gets a faraway look in his eye. Rooms, my poison, to answer your question. Believe it or not, I can't even throw these axes worth a damn, dry as I am. But get a few drinks in me and I'll see bright ribbons in the air. Wait, you see lines of light? Damn right. Showing me exactly where the axes are going to go. Usually, if I keep that sort of thing to myself. Usually I keep that sort of thing to myself, but what's the point? Ollie, I think you may be spell-weaving. Ollie straightens his back as if startled. What are you talking about? Like the menders do. Weaving. Like this Nidhengur who farts lightning and raises the dead. But only when I'm drunk. And you're using it to throw things better. Ollie erupts into laughter, loud enough to make even Spar frown. What a time to be alive, eh, Varl? I drink to that. Don't tease. You and Ollie pass your meat or you pass Ollie your meat arm and hand and his hands shake as he gums from it greedily. Ollie the spellweaver. My mum always said I was special. Maybe you're not as bad as they say, Varl. Who says that? Just take the victory.
ever pulled them back to the next set of walls, the news tightens. Not everybody survived the scramble to scra uh, safer ground, and you can see the lurching bodies of the fallen just beyond the black veil, gone but not dead. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, but um, kind of tired. <laughs> Jesus, this is a fucking fight. Ugh.
actually doing pretty well. This fight is going so much better than the other one. <laughs> Fuck, I wish I had some water. We're gonna keep fighting because we're doing really well.
his armor. Jesus. That guy just killed two of his own. What an idiot. This is an opportunity to press an attack. Your hands shake. Have you ever done something like this before? Is this, some, is this who you are now? You push the questions aside. A chance to make some of the worst criminals in our rank disappear into the smoke is too tempting. Finishing the grim work, you wipe blood from your hands. If it means less bloodshed of innocence, you can live with that. Eventually the fire burns itself out, but not before taking all streets with it. As far as anyone can tell, you are just there to help. A livid crowd of horseborn confront each other. You recognize Canary and Daedru among them. At their hooves lay victims of the spat. Canary is waving her javelin threateningly. You can't be certain what has sparked them this time, or who is the blame. Convince Canary to put a weapon down. Canary seems confused at first, as if expecting you to take up arms with her. She hurls her javelin into the ground in protest. You pull the crowd apart until the only thing still thrown is, be, uh, is insults into the wind. You never do find out what happened, but such luxuries seem to be less and less within reach. Okay, so we earned two, two days. Sweaty warmth still radiating from the fragments 
has everyone eager to pass through except Ivan. He has stopped at one with his hand pressed against the glassy surface looking at his own reflection. Come on, Ivan. It's time to go. I hardly recognize myself. Could be worse. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to compare. The reality of what I must do is sinking in. We're getting close. Ivan stares into the distance. Now is not the time for second thoughts. It was always such a long way off. There's more time. Time for what, exactly? Ivan sighs heavily. Juno revealed it already. But there's some, uh, something you may not have fully grasped. Something she forbade me to tell you. She worried it might change things. No more secrets. The only way the Black Sun will return to the sky is for Juno to seal the darkness within. So she has to stay there, trapped for eternity. Yeah, I, I caught on to that. A fate worse than death, and it was my fault. All she's done since, since is fight tooth and nail to make things right. All she's ever done. You can see anger spreading across Ivan's face. He almost looks as if he's drawing energy from the sun shard. What if there's another way? Even with the sun broken, there must be energy enough to destroy the serpent. That might... it might be enough. No, we don't change the plan now. This was never my plan. I admit I broke things, but it's up to me to fix them. Who else can do this? Why should I keep asking for permission? Ivan, think of your friends in Arbora. Ivan's mouth becomes a thin line and some of the fire in his eyes go out. I know. I apologize. My thoughts have always been difficult to control ever since birth. My mother was the head of the Valka in her time. When she had a boy, the council was worried. The males of our kind have always been a touch of, have always had a touch of madness, to varying degrees. My father couldn't contain his own. I suppose that kind of power would be hard for anyone. It is a curse. I am the own I am only alive at all thanks to Juno and she has kept this power within me from spilling out. When she spoke of, uh, spoke to me in a dream at Einartoft, I wasn't even sure it was real. It had gone so long without her help. I had gone so wrong without her help. I was trying to lose control again. Everything she had done to heal me. And for that, she suffers. Can you imagine feeling so powerful and so weak at the same time? I can imagine. Ivan nods, and you feel that you've earned more of his trust. Oh man, this game needs to needs to come to an end. It's been over two hours. We could have totally done two more episodes. I'm just going to say it, Spark Grasses. I'm starving, and I don't mean it as an expression. I'm so hungry. I might die. The caravan is getting preca uh, precariously low on food, and nobody dares to drink that water from the pools in the ground, uh, dark crevices. You're feeling it yourself. Hello there, Crumson. The stone singer seems to understand that you've never seen them eat anything before, scraping a hard, bell-shaped object from the cliff walls and handing it to you with a motion like opening a book. Huh. I thought that was more of a more craggy rock, says Spar, taking the thing. It has a hard obsidian shell, but once cracked open, a strikingly bright pink plant resides within, squishy to the touch. It looks like a mushroom. It doesn't smell strange or display the same weirdness that everything else does. There seems to be quite a few more still clinging on the cliff. So, who's gonna try and find it first? Smart wonders aloud. Any volunteers? Go ahead, brave Valgard, Ollie says. Children eat first, Valgard replies. I guess I'm not that hungry, concludes Spar. You move on, but can tell the exhausted and irritable caravan is flagging, and the pace suffers. God damn it. Our 
enemies have crashed against the steep bank cliffs of Arbarang before, as they're warped to do now. You retreated again, and it was costly, thousands more dead, but necessary. Banshee veil, uh, wails went on long into the encroaching night, but the black rock has never been breached, the menders tell you. Even with so many slaughtered, space is scar uh, scarce. Alio nods when you tell him you're going to get some air outside the crowded gathering halls. Survivors camping different clusters atop the black rock. You wonder how many families sewn upon your banner are just memories now. Then you note how strange the silence sounds. The clans have lost their taste for troublemaking, and even warped have withdrawn. Maybe you're safe up here. Maybe the menders are right. Alright, we have a lot of renown. We could probably afford an item or two. This one's really good. Two to move, two to strength resist, and three to break. That is a solid item. Selections. <laughs> okay, sure. Sure, buddy. How much was your PC? How much it cost? Well, when I bought it like three years ago almost, it cost me. It would have been like $900. Since then, I've upgraded, or I've added rather, a cheap graphics card. But, like, if you were to buy something of similar quality now, you'd probably only have to pay like. $500, possibly $550, and that's by Norwegian costs. In America, parts a little bit cheaper. So if you bought the parts in America, you could probably make the same machine for $500, and it would have otherwise cost like $850. That's a lot, man. Well, it's a computer that I use for video editing and so on. And it's not actually that much. He's still alive. Yeah. Let's see. I'm actually going to build a new computer. With 12 cores <laughs> and 24 threads. 
August I started to receive some more income. So basically I'm upgrading everything that I have. I have new lights uh, that I've just got today. I've got a new camera on the way, so soon video is going to look a lot better. Like, a lot better. I'm going from recording with my phone, which I've used for years now, to recording with a DSLR. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and then I, like I said, will be upgrading my, not just upgrading, I'll be building a brand new computer, which is significantly better. Like, way, way better. 12 cores, 24 threads. So, it's going to be sick. And it's probably going to cost me upwards of like $1,500 or so. The CPU alone costs like $500, $550. So, but it's a workstation, not just a, like a personal computer, and they're always expensive. It's definitely gonna cost like two thousand dollars. Now that I think about it, jeez. <laughs> but then I can upgrade that to the new thirty-two core, seven nanometer Ryzen three, or rather, or technically Ryzen two, or um, Zen two chips next year. <sighs> anyway, let's <laughs> get back to this here. This is our. So I'm going to stick with this, in case there is more fighting. Fatigue draws you into a stupor. It feels weird to be doing nothing, Adio says, breaking the silence. Spirits are low. Maybe this would be a good chance to see how everyone's holding up. You consider it. Okay, let's talk to Egil. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Egil puts a hand on your shoulder. As you pass, the first smiling face you've seen in a while, that does not look like a smile. How are you? Are you holding up? I see you're going around, making sure everyone else is alright. Has anyone asked how you're doing? Don't worry, Gil. I'm doing alright. I was never worried, you know. Even back in school, good. I always thought we'd be okay. I can't really shake the feeling that I'm really lucky to still be here. What are the odds? So many people didn't make... Oh, is there anything I can do? You know, to help? I could use a hand making sure the survivors get any food or medicine they need. I'd be happy to do that. Looks like you've got a great hole covered. But I'll go between the other shelters and see what they're missing. You've always been the helpful one. If I had... Echo hesitates, hesitates, sweating hanging on his brow. You can really tell he's wrestling with whether or not to say. Uh, what is it? I couldn't save anyone. When all this began, I told Rook that I'd do anything to protect the lad. Now they're both gone and I couldn't do a damn thing about it. How did I, of all people, survive this long? You earned it. You learned to use that shield and you deserve to be alive. Maybe. But things could have gone differently. That doesn't mean we don't deserve to be here. You're right. I think I'll go make myself useful. As Eagle walks away, he gives you a kind smile and a nod. Gonna go watch your poor man's take out and go to sleep. Good night. Okay. Okay, let's talk to Zephyr. Zephyr is overseeing the menders, looking just as drained, if not more. She calls you by name. I've heard more about you since coming to Arbara. It seems like these people owe you a great deal. I didn't do it on my own. Close enough, though. I wish I had supported you better at the gates. And I also heard that you traveled with a Baal named Ungvar. That seemed like quite the coincidence. At first... How did you discover the light spell? Not easily. Things went bad at Manahar, and I was only able to, uh, and I was the only one left in the aftermath. I spent days trying anything I could think of against the darkness. I nearly gave up, but what Juno and Ivan must have done. Nobody thought it was possible. When you become a Balka, are you all 
are forced to take an oath to be as vague and mysterious as possible. I'm sorry, it would be hard to believe it if I told you. Try me. I believe they have pulled down and shattered the black sun that resides within the earth. Okay, I can see your earlier point. What's your name? My name's Ben. Ingvar. Do you know Ivor? He is well known, especially amongst the dredge. They say he once slew Sundar called Raze, who, call, uh, who carried Bellower's child. Rowan was Raze's sister. It is my belief that Rowan probably came to Arbarang to find Ingvar. In the face of this darkness, the other Sundar have scattered into the wind. But Ruin wanted revenge, even if it meant killing everyone in the way. Are you saying that all the people who died in the siege was because of Ivor? I can only imagine it's because of... It is why Bellower chased you all the way to Borisgard. I suppose there's no point in secrets anymore. After the Great War, the Valka tried to broker a peace with the Dredge, and mostly succeeded. But one of the conditions was that we deliver the Varl named Ingvar. They called him Destroyer. We searched, but never found him. Juno and Ivan would almost certainly have recognized him. Did they ever mention this? I don't recall. I can't blame you. You have been through quite a lot. Still, I just wish I knew their intentions. Do you trust your friend Ivor completely? More than completely. Then you are right to let them go. And that itself gives me hope. What's your plan now? To keep this light lit as long as I can. In the early days, the Balka had near godlike powers. They spent generations obsessed with immortality. It has become diluted over time, of course. know that the Valka raised the black rock plateau we're standing on, both straight out of the earth. The unnaturally dark uh, rock is the same material dredge used to make their armor, believe it or not. That was long before I was born. Me, I've never, uh, me, I've learned a few tricks, but all I can do now is share the same blind hope that if we just hold out, well, maybe this will become more used to you than me. The Valka retrieves an item from the fold of her cloak and hands it to you. The clasp of kin. How long do we have left? Not long now. Make the most of your time. I'll let you focus. I only wish I could have done more. <sighs> okay, well, let's check out the item that we just got. The clasp of kin. I'm in North Carolina and we're gonna get it 
hard by hard in Florence. Well, you can tell Florence to fuck off. You know, I've heard mankind take cold being old an insult, but I never knew why. Never let me think. Well, the fault of Scrimstead was something to behold. Half the city sinking into Silverstone, and Grofheim was even bigger. But something like this, no, it was not. Funny how our memories mesh their worth, isn't it? I remember my companion Gunnulf telling me about, telling me I looked like an eggplant better than I recall, a city sinking beneath the waves. That's why I like to write things down. What have you been writing in your book? Stories mostly, but not like the Menders uh, and Skalds do, no. The Menders write about what's in the past and the Skalds stretch their fantasies about what happened. The historical writings are mostly useless if you ask me. Even a perfect record is only as good as the man reading it, and most of us aren't that good. You mean we remember things the way that suits us best? You can spin a dozen different morals from the same yarn. Indeed, we're all a bunch of liars at heart. I write stories about people. When someone reveals their hopes and fears, that's the truth of things, even if it's a lie. Understand? One of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons I learned to talk to people like the horse barn. I'd like to speak with the dredge too one day if they'll have me. Oh no, my mouse. I've been curious for more detail about Dalalond, the horseborn's homeland. Ah, Dalalond. You wouldn't believe it, Hunter. Cities of solid gold and rivers of wine. You're joking. You're a wily one. No, it was white fields and tall sky. They wonder. Everything they build has to wonder with them. Did you know that they believed the sun stopping was a blessing? They loved it before the earthquakes. Then their land was shattered just like yours and ours. And dredge came from everywhere. If you ask me, there's something a lot bigger beneath our fate than we realized. In a way, it makes me glad. I'd be quite sad to live in a time where we've mapped everything the world has to show us. Then what? A small world makes for small thinking. I'll leave you to your work. No worries. If you want to talk, I'm glad for the company. Out of curiosity, what are you planning to do with your writings if the darkness overtakes us? Leave it for someone else to find. Uben's smile suddenly falls from his face as he realizes it'll become warped. Would you believe if I hadn't thought of that? Maybe a horseborn could. No, not without a mender. Maybe we could spare a mender too. Damnation. We'll have to live. There is no other way around it now. <laughs> okay. The warped have not been able to scale the black wall since uh, since coming here a day ago. Many want to take full advantage of the respite. Others call it folly. Keeping a full watch now meaning, means forcing fatigued and wounded survivors to take turns. Some haven't slept in days. The strong protect the weak. Let volunteers take watch. Unfair, some say. Life is unfair. How the fuck is it unfair to let people volunteer? Idiots. Stress is starting to seep into every decision. Nobody comes happy. Uh, comes away happy, but enough capable men and women volunteer. And the dreaming face of a sleeping child convinces you it was the right decision. Will he eat game manual? No. A woman comes to you quietly, in confidence. So a bunch of the fools she confides, drunk as boiled owls, laughing it up down there. Some of the men have snuck downstairs to take advantage of the dwindling mead. Join us, Hunter. They chortle. We 
when you go look for yourself, you can't take it with you. Maybe they have a point. On the other hand, these supplies could have been stretched out for days. You spy took me amongst them and slapped the cup from his hand. It rattles to the floor as you watch it continue to bounce, as if it, on its own the whole room rumbles and shakes. Flagstone, yeah, flagstone bursts around your feet and the warped claw their way from underneath. Terror drags the sluggards to their feet. This must be what the warped have been up to this whole time. Farm stirs a man, pulling down a barrel onto the warped and knocking it back below. Farm them all. Save supplies and wait for help to arrive. Leave the meat alone. You shout angrily, pushing a man up the stairs, and send some real help if you're going to be useless quickly. More warp drag themselves up into the basement, and eternity later, backup comes clumping down the stairs. What took so long, you shout. It's not here, Alia replies. They're coming all over the place. Amongst the warp dredge rises the twisted wreckage of what must be a sunder. Just its presence makes you, uh, your skin crawl, and your instincts scream. Flee, but where? Send them back into the dirt. You shout, for, uh, shout in spite of yourself. since you applied for a job at a th thievery company. What? What, 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 what? Applied for a job at a thievery company as lightning. But you didn't go for it. Or it is. Don't think it was such a long time ago. I can't remember. What the? Thievery company as lightning. What does that mean?
Netflix once a year for the rest of your life or grab yourself in private every day for the rest of your life. What a stupid question. Who would ever choose to grab themselves in private every day? Like, what kind of life is that? at work for the rest of your life or uncontrollable gas on every first date for the rest of your life. <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably rather just kill myself. Love your ASMR. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. The basement is dark and silent once again, and the survivors hustle to seal the cover of the holes. You're suddenly glad you saved the meat because you could use a drink right now. Someone is telling Zephyr that only half the menders have survived. Five days, and these are the last five days. Jesus. <sighs> yeah, this is straight up gonna be like a three hour stream. Keep a friend company. Alfred beckons during a short rest, patting a lonely rock on the caravan's edge. Innocent enough, but you see the ulterior motives on her face, brighter than the white tower in the distance. You have something on your mind. You, Ivor. It's funny. I should hate you. 
many sculptors are my friends, and you are the, and you are, and you are they, what, and you are who they tell their children to fear. But I don't hate you. The more I, the more about you I know, the more I like you. Is that really what you wanted to talk about? Straight to the point. Ivan and Juno, they trust you, don't they? But I wonder if they have earned your trust. Yes, they have. Trustworthy and loyal. Do you have any faults, Marl? Now, Juno, she may be weaving little truths, but step back. Look at the whole tapestry. They wield terrible power. Perhaps you've noticed. It's exactly why they've made the Order of the Menders. Ah, look over there. Look over here, rather. We're only healing the sick, building houses. Pay no mind to the madmen on ivory towers, turning the world inside out. I've considered it. Come closer. I've been created a fawn immortal. Can you comprehend? Juno cannot die. But that wasn't their goal, was it? What is immortality without power? Misery. No, I think they're trying to make God make themselves gods. Don't tell me you've believed them. Uh, you believe they've come so far just to undo it all. I do. Then wake up. There is no more room for ignorance in this tiny bubble. Say nothing now. I'm not asking for your promises. But a time will come, and soon, I think, when you'll see the truth unfolding before your eyes. When that time comes, look at me. Trust your instincts. Juno and Ivan are not the only ones to, who know how to twist the threads. I will make certain what they claim to be doing, and what is done. I've got to live here too, you know. This video is so lit. Your mouth sounds are naughty. Hey, not all my mouth sounds are naughty. Some of them are nice. Sir, Christmas presents. A distant rumble approaches. He's from League of Legends, and he's here to no. And all the things that could be, that could be raised through your mind, that could be raised through your mind. Someone shouts, "Earthquake!" As the ground bucks beneath your feet, violent shaking peels rocks, rock sheets off the nearby cliffs. They crash around you. Great billowing clouds of dust. Is everyone all right? You shout in the aftermath. Knew I recognized you from somewhere. Balgard shouts. He's swinging at Ollie with clenched fists. This bastard tried to push me into the falling rocks. Let the confusion and the dust clear. Frustrated ravens are letting off steam with chance of fight. I don't care what's going on here, but it stops now. Valgard manages at least one last half-hearted punch to Ollie's face, but they push each other away. True enough, says Ollie. There will be plenty of time to settle this later. Valgard spits. Count on it. That earthquake was no coincidence, Ivan says, changing the subject. Same as when the serpent carved chasms through the earth above. Be on your guard. When you use your next math, what math sounds bit? I don't know. So these cliffs were homes for the dredge. Yes, as before. Why do you ask? Because I'm starting to see a lot of movement ahead. This time the shifting shadows in the corners of your eyes are real, ahead and behind. The others have noticed and are quietly putting their blades, flickering like a school of fish as you purse together. There are warped everywhere, a head clustered together to slow your progress, and more dot in the horizon. We're so close, says Valgard, and you know his frustration. Charge and break through the crowd. What are we waiting for? He shout. Push through. Loud cars outside. Okay, this is our A team, so let's stick to that. Well, actually, we don't need ditch. We should have Valgan instead of ditch. And we should upgrade her.
to see what people get elsewhere. Because, like, it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I find it kind of exciting to, to, uh, just get, like, random food for really cheap. <laughs> like, you know you're always getting a good deal, you just don't get to choose what you get. so far. We're going to be taking out this guy pretty early on.
Sweet. We only took one casualty there, so that wasn't that bad. Hey, by the way, you should totally press the like button. Uh, the warped are becoming more relentless. Seems to be more and more of them spark gripes, rubbing his sore shoulders. You nod. Must mean we're getting close. This is where our troubles began. And with luck, where they will end. When the warped emerged from below, the few who survived retreated to the center of the plateau. Zephyr, along with only two of the manders, can only protect a slight area larger than the great home itself. Clansmen pressed together on the front doorstep are trying to find space within the already dangerously cramped inner hall, and you take fighters to protect them from the warped as the light shrinks again. But the darkness does weird things to the place where it touches the ceiling. Stuck between the light and dark, timbers in the ceiling wobble and stretch unnaturally as if turning into animal fat. As the timbers at the entrance buckle and collapse, Gunnulf is already there, holding up the whole wall for the terrified people to crawl through. Snarling, warped, decide to make their move. Hurry, he shouts. I love Gunnulf. He's been here since the beginning, since the beginning of the first game, and he's still here kicking ass.
Beatrice whereabouts in the headed in the uh, southwest Somerset.
I'm sure I look different these days. On second glance, he does look familiar, but you can't quite place him. Dalaran, from Skogar. You've been in the caravan the whole time, for the most part. I had to leave the group once or twice, but I found my way back. He lets out a thin laugh. His, twink his eyes twinkle with sincerity. It's almost hard to remember so long ago, back in Skogar. Things have certainly changed. Back then I used to tend to the yaks. I had names for them. We fled old Asti. Uh, we f when we fled, old Asti took us to Frostveller. I don't expect you knew that, but I did. Frost, uh, Frostveller was where things started to get hard. And I, my boy, became ill. He died soon after that. My wife, she just... She got too tired. I'm sorry. I don't see a crown on your head, but it's always looked heavy to me. Reminds me of a story you might care for. I've got time to humor an old man. Of course. You're a good person. My father brought me to Skogar when I was just a child. He was a woodcutter. Skogar was just at woods back then. I remember how the snow hung in the branches. It was nothing like where we came from. They had candles put in the trees that year. I can still see it. It was the star. It was like the stars had come to visit us. I was one of six children. My twin sister died that winter. She died to the cold. I always think of her in the winter. We went and performed the rites at the Godstone, Ritvialder. He had hard eyes. Like when he, uh, like he was watching. I remember that. My father always told us gods can't die. Ritvaldir was the hunter's patron. Not sure what he expected in return. A bunch of elk would, have, would wander into town. Anyway, we had long winter instead. Skogar almost disappeared that year, buried in snow. No elk, no food. The rest of my family survived, luckily. There were a lot of starved. Ah, oh, well, you're a kind soul to listen to me talk about myself. You must be wondering why I've told you all this. We laid my sister's body, and it was burnt. Her ashes rose up in the branches overhead. I hear him whisper. No tree grows in the sky. The kind of thing a woodcutter says, isn't it? Didn't make sense at the time, but it stuck in my head. Nothing lasts forever, Hunter. That's what he meant. I'm now... Now I'm his age, when he died. Truth be told, I doubt my father believed that Ritvaldir was there all that time ago. He was pretending for the rest of us. How you die is as important as how you lived. Ah, enough for me. What I'm trying to say... Uh, what am I trying to say, anyway? Look at all these people, broken and starving. We're not all going to make it. There is not enough food and drink, even for the healthy. Do we all suffer now, even those who can still stand and fight? I'm giving you permission, Hunter. Permission to survive. And if I die now, I die with a reason. That is enough for me. No tree grows in the sky. Fucking hell. This guy is really padding out this length. Oh. You're right, Dalaran. I'll make sure this bread will be put to the best use. Then I suppose that all I have left to give is my thanks. You've done for me as much as anyone could. You endeavor to make sure that the healthy and hale get enough food to continue the fight. By the gods, remarks a man staring at a window. A dim light bubble approaches. Entering the great hall with his chin high is Ruga. Followed by a very bloodied bodyguard and a ragged mender, whose head hangs low. Hawkins says, I wondered where that rat had skittered off to. The description is apt. Rooker looks especially gaunt and mangy. You wonder where and how he got his own mender, feeling pity for the badly bruised woman. Rooker sinks his sinks into the throne that has remained empty since my love died. As if into a lover 
Paris embrace. Things are going to change around here, he sneers at his audience. He seems not quite right, even for Rucka. I am king now, he says. And that one is a traitor, he points at you. I want their head. To refuse, your king is treason. The ever-twinning survivors look between each other, unsure how to react to this. Put an arrow between Rucka's eyes. You move like water, and before another word is said, an arrow pins Rucka's head to the chair in complete silence. Hawkins sighs and lifts the entire chair, body and all. He heaves it through the doorway, where it twists and lurches in the darkness, and returns, brushing off his hands. <laughs> well, that was quick. Then everyone gets back to their business as if nothing had happened. Holy fucking shit. Like, what am I supposed to do here? 
if we can do this, but this is going to be a really close call.
question mark. A trick of perspective? No. There already are that many stairs. Bolvark doesn't look right, still as he is. But he doesn't rise again. Ravens stare, wearing a wide range of emotions on their face. You have no time to keep yourself. You drag Ivan toward the tower, where the stairs spiral upward beyond sight. And you take the first of many, many steps.
make Juno suffer an even worse fate. Please, Ivan, trust me to find a solution. Ivan turns the back to the serpent, his body radiating immerse, uh, immense power as he speaks to it again. Alfred gives you a severe look as if to say he lies. You recall our plan to complete the ritual. In place of Ivan. Okay, so what I'll say is that Ivan doesn't want to go through with the plan that was originally the plan anyway. Yeah, like the dude is gonna side with the serpent. And with that in mind, it sort of doesn't matter if Elfrin betrays us. Like, it doesn't matter. Either way, I think this is going to hell. I see in my dreams. This is where I helped my father build our house. And where I buried him. This is where I met Altis, my wife. And Ivar, my best friend. And this is where Alet was born. I'm home. Is it really you, Ale? It's really me, Dad. I'm so sorry, Ale. I failed you. I couldn't protect you. I never wanted this 
leaving you alone. was the end of the Banner Saga. stopped, cut with keen edge sword, little did they sleep, lest they not come home, weary the weight of the sun, of our bones, the hills, the slayer and the slain, from the homes, must all flee. I don't understand, the, you know, I wish I had like a melody for this, I was trying to make one. Cast their hone into the air to speak in all tongues where a foe may lurk. The destined day shall come, the fetters will burst, brothers fight, and kinship stain, and in fear quake all. The true hero comes reluctantly, raising high their shining light. Alas, the sea is dead and wide. The hounds are a hungered. We live as we live. We live as we will live, with the mighty grief that was ours and theirs, 
only with you. Remember it now. Aleo gives a little cough to indicate he's done. It's not bad, but it could use a couple more verses at the end there. Aleo laughs. Aye, you're right, it certainly could. Wait, what is that? Do you see it? You squint into the ashes of the twisted land spread out across the horizon. Something there is moving, and it looks like a line of people at the front. Is that Ivor?
nice to have a little bit more credit, uh, credits music. Thank <laughs> you. 